In the previous video, I used a 2.13 inch e-paper from WEAC Studio. In this video, I will try using a 4.26 inch e-paper display from Waveshare. For the controller, I am using an ESP32 because the larger font size requires more memory compared to using the ESP8266 as in the previous video. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss other interesting videos. I'm also using an external power supply to ensure the ESP32 gets sufficient voltage, preventing any brownout issues. This is the wiring to connect the Waveshare e-paper to the ESP32. On the Waveshare e-paper, there are VCC and power pins, both connected to the 3 volts pin on the ESP32. Just like in the previous video, the first step is to install the necessary library for using the e-paper, which is GXEPD2. Open the library manager, search for GXEPD2, and install it. Next, for the example code, I'm still using the one from WEAC Studio because it's quite easy to work with. Go to the WEAC Studio GitHub repository and download the example code. Since I'm using an ESP32, make sure to download the file for ESP32. In this example code, there are several class modules available for different e-paper models from WEAC Studio. Since I'm using a 4.26 inch e-paper for Waveshare, which is not included in the code, we can add a class module for it by finding the appropriate class in the files located within the GXEPD2 library folder. Open the file name gxepd 2 underscore bwh using notepad. BW stands for black and white, as I'm using a black and white module. Inside the file, search for the class name that corresponds to the module size, which is 4.26 inches. Next, copy the class name into the example code file. Replace the module selection with the class name you copied from the gxepd 2 underscore bw.h file. Next, for fonts, we can add the necessary fonts to display text on the e-paper. The available fonts in the library can be found in the Arduino Libraries folder. Inside the Adafruit underscore GFX underscore library folder, there's a font subfolder that contains all the available font files. You can browse through these font files and select the one that best suits your needs. If the required font is not available in the folder, you can download it from the internet and copy it into the fonts folder inside the Adafruit underscore GFX underscore library directory. After adding the new font file, make sure to include it in your code, just like the default fonts. This is what the display looks like when we run the example code. There are a few changes, such as the text and the font size, which is larger because I'm using a bigger screen compared to the standard e-paper from WEAC Studio. We can also observe that the screen refreshes quickly, with the e-paper only blinking once during the process. In this code, the e-paper supports both full window updates and partial screen updates. When drawing a black rectangle using the partial screen update method, we can see that the ghosting effect is barely noticeable. In addition to displaying a black rectangle using the partial screen update, the e-paper also displays text with changing values, and its position also shifts dynamically. This is useful when you want to show rapidly changing text without having to update the entire screen. Just like in the previous video using a smaller e-paper, with this e-paper, I'll try to display the date and time. The time will be retrieved using NTP via a Wi-Fi connection. The time will update every second, while the date will refresh the screen only when the date changes. In this experiment, make sure the power supply is sufficient because the Wi-Fi connection on the ESP32 consumes a lot of power. I'm using an external power supply to address this issue.
For the next experiment, I will be using an RFID reader, and the e-paper will display the UID of the tag scanned by the RFID reader. Here is the wiring for the ESP32, where some of the pins are shared with the connection to the e-paper. In conclusion, we've successfully set up the 4.26-inch Waveshare e-paper with the ESP32, demonstrating how to display text, handle screen updates, and integrate with external devices like an RFID reader. By using partial screen updates, this e-paper minimized ghosting effects, and we also implemented real-time date and time updates via NTP over Wi-Fi. Additionally, we ensured stable power supply to the ESP32, especially when using Wi-Fi. Thanks for watching, and I hope this tutorial helps you with your e-paper and ESP32 projects. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tutorials. See you in the next video.